Hey everyone, Revan here, and welcome back to episode 7 of Stone Block 2, where today, today we're going to build ourselves a reactor, and then hopefully we'll get into uh, killing ourselves some withers. So sit back, enjoy the video, and let's see what we can't get done. So right off the top, uh, last episode we left off in preparations to make our wither farm. We made this maximum size compact cube. And after I made it, I made the realization that, well, we really aren't producing that much power. So if we're gonna make something that is not only going to be containing withers and transporting withers and all this other fun stuff, we, well, <laughs> to be blunt, we need more power. So. I'm not going to go all out today, uh, but we are going to get into an extreme reactor. And the reason I want to get into extreme reactors is, is fairly simple. It's easy. <laughs> that is the, uh, the best way to put it. It doesn't, it's not going to require a whole lot of resources that we don't have. I mean, it's not going to put out anything crazy, especially with the reactor size that we're going to make. However, it should do uh, everything that we need it to do. And at the end of the day, I'm hoping to get somewhere around like 80,000 RF a tick, which will be much better than what we're currently producing. So a uh, couple things that we're gonna need, uh, we're gonna need some reactor casings. And so we're gonna need a bunch of these cores, which is just graphite, which I have a chicken for, iron, gold, all that other good stuff. So this, we can just make ourselves a bunch of them and not really have to worry about the resources that we have. So then we're also going to need some casings. Uh, we'll start like this and see where this gets us. Uh, we're going to need a controller. There we go. We're going to need a, I don't know. Is it the redstone port? I always get these confused. It's either the redstone or I think it's the redstone flux power tap is what we need here. So let's grab one of these and then we're going to need two of these access ports. One for putting items in and obviously one for taking items out. And then I think we're going to need, I shouldn't say I think, I know we're going to need fuel rods. I'm not sure how many of these we're going to make. Let's just get two stacks of them for now. Uh, you know what? Let's make three and four just in case we can put this wheat back in this cow halter. I've been working on cows uh, pretty much the last three days. It's been about three days since I did our last uh, recording session, mainly because of the fact that I wanted to get through cows. And as you see, I, I did get through all the cows. And the reason I did all this off camera because it's very boring. <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of like the same thing as chickens, except you know, you're really not doing anything different to breed the cows than you would with regular vanilla Minecraft cows. You feed them a little bit of wheat, they pop out a baby, you wait X amount of time. As you get further down the chain, that time in between breeds takes longer and longer and longer. And then you get to the point where you get the infinity cow, uh, which is this one down here. And it's literally like an hour between breed sessions. And it's like a one in 100 chance that you'll actually breed an infinity cow. Uh, from the uh, evil infused iron and the stellar alloy. So yeah, it, it took me about three days of just on and off, you know, going over there, breeding cows up and everything like that. Plus work has been, <laughs> work has been fairly hectic. So uh, we're also going to need a roost. Let's grab one of these guys and we're going to need some conduits. So let's just grab up some item conduit. And let's grab some tape. Do we have an extra drawer in here? We do have a drawer and we have this guy we can just toss on it. And the reason I want to grab this is because I just want to grab the Eulorium chickens that I actually had made already. So we should have a decent amount of Eulorium saved up. Let's see here. And the Eulorium is, of course, going to be inside of a compacting drawer. I should have thought about that. So what we'll do for now is we'll just kind of leave that be and we'll just see what the chickens produce. Uh, a couple stacks of 16, 16 chickens should be 
more than okay with us. I did a little bit of messing around down here. Uh, I changed this pathway. As I said, remember, we're going to put our Draconic Core underneath here and then just made a couple little walk downs. And then I just finished each one of the rooms. I was kind of debating between going back and forth with, you know, doing different themes for each room. But then I kind of thought to myself like, well, you know, if you have a large room in a build, uh, your chances are you're going to kind of stay with the same type of theme, you know, for everything. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of reason to have like this room be all purple and this room be all green. Uh, it's just, I figure we can add color with the accents. Like once we turn that thing on, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of, it's going to have all its fluctuating color patterns. And then when we have the drives and the, the crafting, the crafting grids and stuff like that in there, it's going to add a lot of color to the room on its own. So I figure we'll let the mod pack, or I should say the mod pack, we'll let the mods, uh, that we're working in each room kind of add the color to the room. That's, that's kind of what I'm hoping, but I did set this this little area aside to make our reactor, and I was kind of playing around with the walls, how I want to do them. I'm not happy with the the upper portion of the wall, and I'm not 100% sold on this uh, the gratings on the bottom either, mainly because of the fact that they kind of add this weird, I don't know, like it kind of gets blurry and a little bit teary when you move across it, so... I'm not sure I, I like that much of it in a row, but I'll be playing around with a few more blocks. And then I thought, okay, well, maybe if we have some scaffolding in here to kind of make it look like a machine room. So I got a little bit more playing around before we figure out. And I also did tear out the walls here just to kind of make these like supported buildings. Over here, we have our infinity cows, which still haven't processed. Um, they still, I think it's almost like five hours between processing. So it's going to take a long time. And then I think you only get one bucket per cow. So I'm going to have to set up a whole lot more of these to actually get a decent amount of infinity. But I wanted to kind of get a head start on the infinity ingots, mainly because of the fact that they're, I don't want to say they're a good source of EMC because of how long it takes, but based upon like how much one infinity ingot is worth in EMC, I think it's like 47 billion or something like that. You know, I figure if we have a couple, couple rows of those guys, and that's like 64 cows right there. So if we get like four or five of those, you know, and they're producing, you know, a stack of ingots every five hours or something like that, that should be a, a good start for our, for our EMC production when we actually get a tablet. So we're just going to set this guy up. I'm not really sure how big I want to make it. Uh, 10. And I, I don't remember if these things need to be uh, square or not. One, two, three, four, five, nine, ten. Eleven. Let's just make it a square. Eleven by eleven. And we do have a torch. I'll just put you down. All right. So just to make sure. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. We'll grab a little bit of room here and just pop this down real quick. And I did not actually bring up a wand. So let me go grab that. All right. We're back from a nice little game crash there. <laughs> Got ourselves a wand. Let's see, what else are we going to need? I suppose we can take our tape and toss it in there. Let's grab ourselves a bucket. Not a bucket, a bucket. Grab you. And we did make ourselves some resident ender to be utilizing as the coolant uh, in this magma crucible over here. So hopefully, I don't remember if black holes uh, keep their inventory. I'm, I'm hoping they do. Otherwise, that was a really dumb move because there was a, there was about a crate of ender pearls in there. All right. So back over here. Let's just take you you we don't need the feeder we need the wand all right and then we need to, need to build one around all 
I think we needed, I think I need one more piece for this too. I think we need the control rod, uh, controllers on the top, but we can go grab those in a sec. Let me turn on hover mode here. And then just make sure that we have enough room to get out. And so now we need to figure out what type of design that we want to do. If we want to go for fuel efficiency, then we should do something where we have the coils in the center, uh, just so that they, they power themselves. Like this is probably going to be the most efficient setup that we're going to make. Uh, this type of thing should probably do somewhere around like 90,000, uh, RF a tick unless they've changed something. So. And then we can just, we, we're only going to have to put the resident ender in here. If we really wanted to like thump out massive amounts of power and, and we didn't care about, you know, uh, how much Elorium or whatever that we're burning through, then we could do like the checkerboard pattern and stuff like that just to get more of the, the rods in here. But I, like I said, I'm not concerned about making crazy amounts of power right now. I just want something that's going to be stable and be more than enough for you know our little wither killing chamber and the machines that we have because right now i'm still kind of i haven't made a lot of machines i'm not running a lot of things simultaneously mainly because of the fact i'm trying to be cog cognizant of you know how much power that we actually have so let's just run these guys up right there and then like i said we're gonna need a few more a few more items uh, but we can actually toss you and you there and we can take our ports. And I think if I just set this to eject, there it is. So this will eject our items and this will input our items. So if we take our item conduit, lead it over here to our drawer that we actually have. I really, one of these days I have an axe, but I refuse to use it. So we can just toss that there. We can toss that guy there and we'll just toss this roost here and we can toss our emerald chickens in there. And then we can put another one on top. If we, if we really wanted to and another one there, just so that we have three of them filling it. And then that is going to be insert. This guy will be extract. And from here, we'll just have it going into another drawer for our, uh, I always forget what the output is. It starts with a C. It's like the blue ingot. Cyanide or something like that. Uh, yeah, cyanide. So let me go get the other things that we're gonna need real quick. All right, so the things that we're missing is we need one of these uh, reactor control rods for, um, that's going to be sitting on top of each one of our reactor uh, fuel rods. So we're going to need, I think we had nine of them total. Uh, we can just toss you back in there. And that'll be nine. We don't need as many of you guys as we have. We can fill, make a little bit more room here. And we have this, we have that. Let's grab some more of the drawer upgrades. Let's see, where are we at? Upgrade fives. And let's go grab some chickens. So this is the area that I was breeding my cows in. I just dug a couple little holes and was breeding them up. I still have these guys breeding. And I did actually find uh, <laughs> a little bit of a hint, or which is, you know, it's kind of like a cheat and it kind of annoyed me because I, I honest to God, I did not figure it out until I had actually uh, bred all the way up to having five of the infinity cows. So I did everything, you know, 100% legit. And then I found out that if you left click on a cow, if you see the breeding time right now is 55 minutes. If you left click on them, you pick them up as this like entity or this tile. And if you put them back down, their breed time is reset. And you could do the same thing for uh, for babies. So once they have a baby, you can left click on them with this cow halter. You'll pick them up as well as entity, tile entities, and you can put it back down and it'll be an adult that's ready to breed. So 
yeah i found that out after i made it all, all the way through cows i was i was uh slightly annoyed to say the least okay so eulorium chickens we have 16 here and we have 16 here we can just in case we need more toss you guys in there and then do we have seeds on standby nope all right we got ourselves a stack of seeds <laughs> i knew keeping that wheat farm around was gonna was gonna come in handy one day all right so we have these guys we have those and we got a stack right there all right let's go back down and set these guys up so they can they can start bre breeding for us or not breeding but producing eulorium So these guys are just going to go up in there and then we'll kind of hit them with a little bit of time in the bottle to, to help them along the way. And we can toss you guys in here. Where's our other drawer? We'll toss you there and grab these guys upgrades. And then we're going to set you to insert you to out. We'll just toss the controller right here. And I have to think, do I want to take this pretty much all the way up to the ceiling? I mean, once I put another floor on, I'm not going to be able to move anyway. So I may as well just toss this all the way up. Ooh, ooh. there's one thing that I forgot. All right. So one, the thing that I forgot was actually iron. And the reason that I'm grabbing iron is because I don't need anything in this area. As far as coolant is concerned, I just need something that's going to conduct or be considered a conductive block. So in that case, this is going to be iron. So the reason I say that is I did some research on it and found out through other people's trial and error, uh, cause other people have a lot more <laughs> ingenuity and, uh, the, just the kind of mindset to want to know what does what than than I really do. Um, but there was a couple, couple theories. I shouldn't say really theories. Uh, people had done tests on on the cooling properties that this reactor has and, and how it reacts with it. And they found that the coolant really only reacts or affects the fuel rods if it's in a, in a horizontal line with it. So pretty much only these three blocks right here are really going to be affecting the, the, the fuel rod, all of these diagonal blocks, they're not. So as long as I don't have any fuel rods over in this area, these guys or this area right here should not affect our, our fuel rods. So I can just fill this in with iron blocks, which is going to be a lot easier when it comes to actually filling the rest of this in. Cause the rest of this, we're actually going to have to fill in with uh resonant ender. Uh, and that's, <laughs> that's going to be fun. So I'm going to start filling all of this good stuff in with the resonant ender from our black hole unit over here. Just, uh, I guess for now, that's a good, good location. And I'm just going to start bucketing it in one by one <laughs> until it's completely full. So I will bring you guys back as soon as all of this is done. Whew. All right. So <clears throat> if I haven't mentioned it before, <laughs> working with this stuff with a resonant jetpack is a pain in the rear. Um, because the resonant jetpack, uh, if you look, this is hover mode, you slowly still go down. And if you hit this stuff, it teleports you somewhere. So it, uh, yeah, <laughs> it can get a little bit annoying. I think I got teleported out about mm, 20 some odd times. So we just got to fill all of this good stuff up over here. And if we just fly over here, I think this should be the last one. Yep. So then we just have to fill these guys in. 
And once we get the rest of this casing on, we should actually have our reactor fully built. And as long as we have a enough eulorium, like we're still gonna have to check on that. But once we get enough fuel in it, uh, we can actually start it up and see how much power we're actually gonna produce. Only problem is I don't really have any form of storage. So everything that we make right now, we're going to end up essentially just burning. So, all right, let's see. Oh, we never turned you on. All right. So the Eulorium chickens actually make uranium ingots. That's kind of interesting. And then you are insert. We can take this guys out and we can just toss you in here. I'm not sure how much it's going to take to fill this guy up. Uh, always active. And let's see where we're at. So we are filling it up fairly decently. So I think one more roost uh, on top of this should give us everything that we need. So I'm going to go dump this stuff off. Uh, and grab those other set of chickens and just to make sure that we don't run out of fuel here. Okay, so one thing that I do want to do before we turn on the reactor is look to get into flux networks. Uh, we are going to need something to transfer energy around the base and the easiest thing for us is going to be these flux networks. So to get into this, we are going to need to cook down a bunch of redstone. So let me just grab, let's see, let's grab a crate. We have some energy conduits. Do we have any more speed upgrades? Uh, 13 should do. Let's just kind of come over here and make ourselves up something real quick. Uh, this is going to be our furnace. So let's just chop this up up here. And... We want you to be insert on, let's say purple, just so that we're not getting our color codes mixed up here. And you're gonna be extract on purple, always active. And then, oh, that's completely not what I wanted to do. And then we'll just take half of our speed upgrades and toss you in there. And then the other ones, we can toss in the extract over here because it should already be extracting to this crate right there. So we just need to toss up our grate and our wireframe and then just grab a bunch of redstone to, to toss through there. All right, I think that should be enough redstone for now. So we'll let that do its thing. And for whatever reason, this is not in Inserting. I think that's just because of the fact that I don't have it set to. Yeah, it, it helps if you actually have it to insert and extract. <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's let that run. Let's go set up, set up the these other chickens down here. I already brought one more set down, so we could toss you guys. If I can actually select it. There we go. And you, we're going to have as nothing. You are going to be extract, always active. Just make sure you're always active. So three sets of 10, 10, 10 Eulorium chickens. Hopefully should be able to keep up with this. We've already accumulated quite a bit of Uranium 368. And if I'm correct, when this thing is fully charged, it should be doing around, uh, I'd say about 0.3 millibuckets per tick. So if we do... Waste in the core will be ejected as soon as possible. Yes. Activate reactor. Let's start this guy up. Now, one of the things that I like and I don't like about extreme reactors is this reactor, as long as it has fuel, uh, at pretty much no matter what the interior setup like, it's just going to keep running, right? There's no way to melt this reactor down. <laughs> I could put, I could fill it pretty much all with fuel rods it would go through just a butt ton of the fuel, but at the end of the day, it's just gonna keep on going. Um, so it's nice because, you know, if you've never done reactors before or really, you know, much power generation, 
and this is one of your first times getting into a reactor it's it's a fairly simple build it's exciting to build like i remember the first time i made one of these i was like oh man i'm making a reactor this is so cool and it takes fuel and i have to cool it and it's got an output you know i thought that was really cool but after playing around with things like you know nuclear craft and stuff like that which you know nuclear craft can be a pain but there's more to it like you have to worry about the temperature you have to worry about what fuel you're putting in it what type of cooling you have so it's a little bit more complex so this is a very good like starter reactor they're not too crazy with power gen like as you see i'm only making about ninety five thousand, and yeah it looks like i'm sitting at about 0.4 so it's a little bit more than i was expecting but every pack is going to be a little bit different uh with how much fuel and you know plus the size of everything so if i think if i would have gone one wider and had a little bit more coolant in there it would have you know gotten closer to like the 0.3 that i was expecting but you know not even half a half a millibucket or not even half a bucket of eulorium per tick so that's you know as long as i'm making one ingot a tick which you know i i should be doing as you can see we're still staying positive here this reactor will will never shut down and i have this set with a void upgrade so you know its output will never get backed up i have this turned down yes so this is just going to sit here and for the rest of eternity as long as we're playing this pack it's going to be spitting out about a hundred almost a hundred thousand rf a tick so that is going to be good enough to at least get us started i mean we are going to have to get into things like steam turbines and you know possibly the mechanism reactor and maybe look into the rainbow generator i don't like it but you know maybe we'll have to because later on in the pack we're going to need a whole lot of power so you know this will get us started it'll get us to what we need and you know we shouldn't have any issues so now that that's running and i am going to be a little bit paranoid here and put a torch up there just so you know nothing can spawn up there but now that the, you know now that we have that going we can actually start concentrating on making our wither killer so let's head back up to our ae terminal and actually look at what we're actually going to need okay so before we actually get into that there is something that i've been horribly neglecting <laughs> pretty much uh for the last couple episodes i haven't been claiming really any of my quests so we claimed the chickens uh but we haven't claimed any of these guys down here and we need to do all of the cows so i'm gonna make sure that i go as far away from a trash can as i can and come into this quest bar and just claim everything and just kind of see you know if we got anything good we got some garden cloches we got some phantom interfaces that's pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Some resonant conversion kits. It's kind of nice. I won't actually have to make them. A couple flux bores. Uh, only one of the Herc Herculean, uh, however I pronounce that, flux. We did get a couple of nether star cruxes. So that's kind of cool. So theoretically, we could get into growing nether stars. We got another ME drive. So we got some void metal ingots. That's going to come in handy later on when we actually need to make uh the get into thomcraft which i'm kind of <laughs> ooh, it's it scares me so and we got a bunch of stuff down there so let's just start tossing this stuff up and just kind of keep our eyes out to see you know if just maybe we, we we got something good that we didn't see all right yeah we <laughs> we didn't really end up with anything other than that than that herculean uh network so Let's see, at, was it Flex Networks that we needed? Yeah, so let's go grab our our Flux from over here. We should have enough to, to get into this. Really, we only need to make a controller, uh, a point, and a plug. So we can grab this. We have a basic, but we're going to use this one since it will store significantly more than the basic. And let's see, what are we going to need to get into this? In order to make the controller, we're going to need some blocks and some of these cores the blocks are going to be just be cores in the flux so let's start off by making a couple stacks of eyes of ender and then just a bunch of these guys because you will end up kind of burning through these especially if you start powering every room with a with a flux plug and just make up 
stack of you for now. So we have our controller, we have our plug, and we have our point. So if you've never used this before, the controller is essentially, it's just setting up your network. Think of it like as your home router. Um, and the plugs are kind of like your, your, your Wi-Fi, uh, your Wi-Fi router and your whatever device you're using. So the plug is your Wi-Fi that's going to admit the signal. The point is going to pick that signal up and transfer it to whatever you want to use it on. So if we came over here and let's say we just pop this guy off and then we could let's say set him to input we take our point and toss him on there uh he'll actually intake power from there so we can just set up our controller anywhere we want in this room for now we'll just toss him in this corner over here and then we can toss this storage unit on top we'll come down here and I think we have to go to create networks and we'll just, you know, obviously keep it as ourselves. And since we're not playing on a server, we don't have to care uh, about encrypting it. If you are playing on a server, make sure that you encrypt it. Otherwise other people, you know, intentionally or non-intentionally could end up, you know, taking a lot of your, your RF. And if you're doing playing a pack like stone block two, and you have an unencrypted network and somebody accidentally ends up on it, and starts, you know, fusion crafting, you could lose quite a bit. So, uh, let's just say public create, come to the home. We're going to say chunk load and disable limit. We'll do the same thing for here. We'll just come over to network selection and put that onto net to Revan. And that will actually cause, create us like a little bit of a buffer. So, when, as we're storing, if it can't go into the cubes, it'll store up in here as well. And then it'll just be used. You don't need to put like a plug or a point or anything like that on there. It's just kind of like a buffer overflow within your network. And then do, 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 do. we got this, we can put all of these guys back in here as well. Oh, we got some 64 K drives. That's, that's going to come in handy, especially because we got a secondary disc drive. So that thing will be almost all full right off the bat. So let's go down and toss our plug onto our reactor. And I put the port in the rear. So I'm just curious how much energy this guy has actually produced so far. And da, 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 da. can't even see it. It kind of looks like it is 10 million RF that it's stored up. So let's select Revan, come home, disable limit, and we'll chunk load this just for, just for why not. And it is producing 12,000 RF a tick. And I think that's just because that's the limit of whatever it's going into right now. So we're probably burning through about 12,000 RF in some way, shape or form. But if we were to, you know, come over here and do Grab this energy cell and where was it? Thermal. Where was our conversion kit? Take one of these resonant conversion kits down here and we can just toss you on, upload you. So now this has 50 million RF per tick storage. If we grab ourselves another, let's see, flux, nope, 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 flux point. Just toss that guy on, select our network, uh, disable limits. As you can see, this is filling up fairly quickly. Uh, it is only going to be transferring 25,000 RF a tick. That is the capabilities of this energy cube. However, if you get into, you know, things like the, the mechanism, uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, it's the matrix something or other in mechanism. Uh, I forget the name right off the top, but uh, it's it's where you store all your energy for mechanism. But we're going to be using Draconic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting getting sidetracked here. All right, let's go back into RF tools. We are going to need a builder. We're going to need a space chamber card. So then we're also going to need a corner block. Uh, obviously, we're going to need a few of these guys. What are we missing here? Machine frames. Yeah, we can just make a stack of those real quick. 
we're going to need one of the controllers. So we're going to need a total of eight of these guys because we are making a cube. And oh, what am I missing here? We're missing some redstone torches. Toss you in there and then doop, pull this guy out. So now we should have what we need. We are going to need uh, a lever, a couple more points just to be safe. Some of these ender chests here, total of four of them. Uh, we're gonna need one, two of them for soul sand and two of them for the wither skeleton skulls. Some die to differentiate the couple ender chests. If we were on a server, we would need a diamond to privatize these guys, but we're not, so we don't have to worry about that. We're gonna need something that's going to be wither proof. So we can either use the reinforced obsidian. I think if we just type in wither, uh, that'll generally bring up any wither proof blocks that may exist in the pack. So like the reinforced glass or the wither proof glass. So this is gonna want wither skull essence, which we don't have. And the reinforced glass is going to be obsidian with is that really going to take dirty glass or is it just regular? Okay. Yeah. So it's going to want something called dirty glass, which is made with soul sand and that. So we can, we can try a little bit of that just so that we actually have a window, but I think most of it is we're going to use the, the reinforced obsidian just cause I know that that works let's go like that and then i'm not sure if we can make it yet but all right so i think we're going to skip on the draconic for now uh and, and we'll see if we can't make do with what we have here um actually instead of the dirty glass we actually needed the wither proof glass the reinforced so let's just toss that in there and yeah, that'll make us a stack okay so we're inside of our compact machine right here so the first thing that we got to do is set up where we actually want the wither to be uh to be created so what we're going to do is we're going to take these guys right here we're going to put one we'll just say right there and then you 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 because you got to remember the wither is going to be you know going to be built right here kind of like this and then with the heads on top so our next corner blocks need to go one above there. And then we just clear all of this good stuff out. Cause I think that would actually interfere with it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build a wither in here, but we're going to build it in a way so that it doesn't actually spawn. Okay. And then we just have our two ender chests over here. And we're gonna pop on our on our dies. So we have one set for Wither Skeleton Skulls and one set for Soul Stone. Or I'm sorry, Soul Sand. So let's just grab a little bit of this and grab some of the of the building material here and not drop you. Thank you. All right. So we are just gonna build this guy up. And to try to make sure that he doesn't spawn here. We're going to surround him in cobblestone and that should stop him from being able to be spawned in. So I am keeping my fingers crossed cause, uh, <laughs> yep. All right. Let's put you on top. You. All right. So we now have a wither inside of here. And once we take all of this cobblestone away, because you don't want anything other than what you want to be built inside of this area right here. So we'll collect everything. And as you can see, that is how a wither is going, is supposed to be built. And it did not spawn in a wither. Uh, if we were just to have built that on the single piece of cobble that's down here, uh, bad things probably would have happened. <laughs> So let's take our space card. So we have, as long as we just right click on this, it's set to channel one. And then we take our builder. And the one thing that I am gonna have to play around with is how this gets built. So as of right now, it's going to be spawning one off the ground. So I kind of want to make my, my killing chamber. Wow, that's loud kind of like make my killing chamber at the same height. 
And I'm going to make this seven by seven, just so it's got a little bit of room inside here. All right. And then we are just going to put place glass on top of this. And before we do anything else, we're going to need something that's actually going to kill this guy <laughs> once he gets spawned. So uh, let me go grab something that's going to dispose of him. All right. So we have our mob crusher. Toss our point on here. Select our network. We're going to chunk load this just to make sure that everything in here stays chunk loaded. And I put a range add on on five uh, just so that it kind of carries a little bit more. It doesn't go very high, but I'm hoping that if something happens and it spawns outside, it'll it'll die in there because, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be bad times if one of these guys gets loose, because uh, as you can see, I don't have any armor. So uh, fingers crossed here on that one. So now we just got to set up this builder. After a little bit of messing around, uh, I'm figuring out that I can't actually change the offsets on this RF RF tools builder here. So I'm not going to be able to push this back into this like I was planning. I thought I could have the builder on the outside and just offset it so it would build it inside of there. So we are going to actually have to make the draconic portal. So let's go look into that. I think we should have everything we need. We have gotten a few of the cores just from uh rewards but uh let's see here so the main thing that's going to be hard may be hard for us like we have yeah we do have some of these cores okay so we're going to need one of these dislocator rep, uh receptacles so we're going to need oh what are we missing here draconium dust all right so let's toss you back in and where was this the draconium infused obsidian Let's just grab, I don't know, as much of this as we can. And let's grab you. And then we're going to need a dislocator so that we can notate where we want it to spawn. And we're going <laughs> to need some more of the dust here. So let's just grab this up. And where were you again? Dislocator. All right. So with these, you just shift right click to bind your current coordinates. So I'm just going to have to go inside of where I want it to, to spawn. And then I can't remember if we actually need to hit this with something or just toss the dislocator into to actually get it going. So this is going to be a little bit of a trial and error in here, but I have faith that we can get this done. All right. So this guy's going to go like this, and then we're just going to have to make a ring around the outside here. Uh, give him a little bit wider berth. Just like this. And then we'll just save this spot right here for the, for this guy right here. And that once we put our dislocator in it, that should show the, create the portal down here. And then we'll just have to break our glass here, which breaks really easily, which kind of concerns me. <laughs> really hoping that that's uh All right. So let's see, we have, we made ourselves an even spot so all right, we'll just make this one wider here but we'll set our we'll set our guy to spawn right here so we just shift right click all right we are now bound right there so now if we come over here and toss this guy in it opens a portal so what will happen is this guy will spawn he'll drop down into this portal and it get teleported in here and that should in theory, <laughs> allow us to keep this thing running indefinitely. So we're just going to do this and grab some more of our glass here. Just so that he can't get out. And then for the builder, let's see. I want him to activate on redstone. So we should probably grab a timer because I don't want it to do it like one after another. So we have this. We just need to hook up our ender chests. Okay, so we're going to try one more thing here. Uh, I'm going to try putting a crate on top and then inserting these guys into here and see if this works. So just running the item conduits into the builder didn't seem to really want to work. So I'm... You know, I know if, if we put a crate on top, you know, it should pick things up. All right, so that popped them in there. 
stand back here because uh, I don't have any armor, so this explosion could hurt me. All right, so it didn't destroy the machine. That's good. All right, we're going to see if this works. All right, we turned off the dislocator portal, turned it back on. Now we're going to set this and we're going to say a delay of 1000 pause when active. So we're going to have this pause to see if it does anything. He's going to go in there. Going to hurt me a little bit, get destroyed and nothing else should spawn. So we'll toss this guy down here. Oh, you grab ourselves an item conduit. So we're going to be collecting legendary loot crates, which we're going to want to keep the wither souls. I'm not really sure about, but we're definitely going to be wanting to keeping the infinity boosters and the supremium essence. So we will just extract everything and toss it in there. And I think that should be a decent speed for now. Cause we don't, we don't really need too many of these nether stars, like right from the get go, but yeah, I don't like the fact that it doesn't kill him in one hit, but we'll make do with what we got. So now when we come over here, we'll have our stuff and then, you know, we can come and say trash can. Oh, not a trash chest, a trash can. We can set them right there. Toss this guy filter. And then let's say if we don't want this and we don't want the inferior, we can just say, uh, whitelist the XP and whitelist this guy. So that should only take that stuff and toss it into our trash can. So we'll only be keeping the superior supremium. Uh, the infinity booster cards and the nether stars and of course the legendary loot crate so we can move this around as soon as we figure out where we exactly we want that but i think i am happy with that we have our wither factory or another star factory going on uh, we have automated fully the uh, spawning and destruction of the wither skeletons uh, i will say one thing that I didn't actually include in the video just because of the fact that I was, I was futzing around with this. You do need one of the smart wrenches. And after you make your eight corners, you need to right click on the, uh, the controller block in order for it to actually form the chamber. So let's go watch that guy. Hey, sucks to be you. But yeah. And then obviously as we get more skulls and stuff like that, we can actually ramp up the speed, but this will just keep running until we're out of wither skulls. Uh, and yeah. So all in all, I am very happy with this episode. We managed to build ourselves a reactor. We're making just under 100,000 RF a tick. We have fully automated uh, our wither creation and our wither disposal. We're collecting nether stars over here. So we've already made our way up to six, which is much better than the zero we had before. You know, we have our infinity cows already spawned and you know eventually maybe one day we should probably check on them <laughs> spawning down below let's go see how much actual infinity we've we've gotten here one of these days i actually need to get into tinkers so that i can actually smelt this stuff up so we have zero so wow yeah these guys still have another hour before they're even done so they take a very long time once we get into emc and stuff like that we'll be able to set up some watch of flowing times down here and kind of speed these guys up a little bit. It won't be much, but it'll be something. But uh, as always, guys, I appreciate you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. If you have not subscribed yet and you think I may have earned your subscription with this video, please uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But until next time, stay awesome, be safe, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>